Hey everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week, and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm an all-around security nerd and your host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting September 9th, 2013. So this week's episode is going to be slightly different. During the week, we had a special guest in our offices, a journalist for many well-known information security publications. So rather than just concentrating on all the security news, I'm going to dedicate a lot of this episode to a quick Q&A with our guest. Nonetheless, I still want to give you a really quick summary of the big stories this week, but I'll post most of the details in the reference section of our blog post. First of all, this week was Update Palooza with tons and tons of updates. There were Microsoft's Big Patch Day, Adobe's Big Patch Day, both of which I wrote about in the blog. But on top of that, if you're an Apple user, there was a big Mac OS X patch as well as a Safari patch. And if you used the WordPress package, they also patched as well. So be sure to go and update if you have any of those packages. Some of the big news this week included a lot of talk about iPhone 5S's new fingerprint technology. When the phone comes out later this month, it's going to have the capability of you using your fingerprint as a second uh, token of authentication to log on to the phone. So what do I think about this? Well, first of all, anything that gets more smartphone users to use passcodes is a good thing. I think a lot of consumers out there do not lock their phone with a passcode because they find it too irritating to have to type it to unlock their phone. But with this fingerprint technology, they just have to touch their phone and swipe it open. So I think anything that makes uh, consumer phones more secure is a very good thing. On the flip side, there's been a lot of black hat research and security expert research that shows of different ways to defeat fingerprint technology. It's not perfect, and if someone does get your fingerprint, uh, it's broken forever. So there are some downsides. Another big news story was one of our partners, Kaspersky, found out a big interesting attack campaign uh, that has to do with North Korea attacking South Korea using different cyber attacks. The malware they talked about wasn't very advanced sounding. Nonetheless, if you're more interested in that particular campaign, I highly recommend you check the link I'll put in our reference section. The final big news is everyone is still talking about the big news from last week, the whole uh, NSA uh, decrypting all our, our internet connections. And there's been more and more details about what NSA really is or isn't capable of doing, and yet there's still a lot of confusion out there. There are some stories I'll make sure to link to that do talk about how NSA uh, did weaken a very specific cryptography algorithm. But I like to state that I don't think all encryptions uh, weakened or broken. It really has a lot to do with implementations, whether or not they have a private key they somehow attain from different organizations. In any case, there's a lot of stories out there, but also a lot of confusion. Be sure to check out the links. So with that said, let's move on to our special guest. On today's episode, we have a special treat for you. Frank Olhorst, an award-winning journalist for publications like uh, PC World, E-Week, Computer World, and Tech Target, and many more, has joined us in our offices today, and we thought we'd get his unique perspective on the InfoSec security market. Welcome to the show, Frank. Oh, thanks for having me. So why don't I start with a simple, broad question. How do you think the security landscape has changed over the past five years? Well, five years is a large amount of time, man, and there's been significant changes. But I think one of the most prevalent changes is how sophisticated threats are becoming. Absolutely. Not only that, how blended the threats are becoming, and everything's being incorporated into today's uh, threats, from social engineering to uh, being combined with key loggers to uh, attacking uh, social um, websites, you know, exactly. such as Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, then also when it comes down to uh, data leakage, you know, the, the things that are being um, 
installed on corporate websites that you know uh, that shouldn't be that uh, add to data leak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely see that too. I mean, I used to. I remember when the worst thing we had to worry about was an email with an attachment. So just really one vector of attack. But now right. it's the email, and it gets you to a website, and that makes some weird right. connection. Yeah, but, uh, attacks used to be about more about defacement. You know, taking sites down. You know, denial of service, things like that. Because yeah. you know those that did it thought that was fun. Now that people have realized that there's financial gain to be had from uh, stealing intellectual property or gathering information, the attacks have become that much more sophisticated because there's a dollar value that can be put Absolutely. to the data. You can make a lot of money. So let's move on to another question that's really good for your unique perspective as a journalist working with a lot of publications. Uh, what kind of security trends and technologies are your, your readers most interested in? And, and what are they looking for as 2013 ends out, 2014 starts? Are there any trends in particular that we might expect to come down the pipe? Well, we're starting to see uh, a lot more of uh, the uni unified threat management type of devices being put out there at the edge of the network. That tied in with uh, more layered security, where security is implemented not only at the endpoint, it's at yeah. the gateway, it's part of the server. Kind of a holistic uh, approach where you have a lot of right. stuff at the gateway, but you work in all and, kinds of And we're of starting other... to see um, cloud services. You know, security yeah, yeah. as a service really Absolutely. come into play, which brings with it you know, advantages such as the ability to quickly respond to threats. Gotcha. And um, there's also the whole uh, concept of the amount of research that's going in to protecting systems nowadays. You know, yeah. all of the uh, large uh, firms, the vendors that are involved with security are investing heavily in the engineering talent to help protect systems. Gotcha, cool. So that's a great answer as far as technological trends. Have you seen anything specifically uh, threat-wise that the readers are most interested in, like any stories you post that guess the most hits about some new attack? It's the threats that people don't realize are threats. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some, it used to be things like, oh, make sure you have a strong password, or make yeah. sure that you have this, or make sure you do that. What's happening now is that the threats are coming in on these new vectors where simply, simply by visiting a particular website, your machine can become infected. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And people are Trump unaware of that. You know, people are all caught up about how dangerous email can be, or spam, or things like that. But to really consider the impact of visiting a site that might have been compromised and then your system becoming compromised because of that, yeah. most people don't realize the depth of uh, how serious I totally like get it, yeah. Made. It's kind of, again, the email example. They might have gotten used to avoiding an attachment in email, but they don't realize, as you said, that just visiting a link can result in a drive-by download mm -hmm. and they get infected. Yeah, years ago it used to be, you used to have to scream at people to back up, back up, back up, and nobody yeah. ever backed up until they lost information. And then backup became almost like a religion, yeah, especially yeah. in this small and medium business world. They always back up. Yeah. Now we're at the point where we're yelling about security in that Sense. And people are like, well, I don't think I'm a target or this or it's expensive or, yeah. you know, wh whatever excuse there is. And then they find out the hard way that it's very expensive not yeah. to be properly protected. Cool. Well, back to technology and maybe focusing on, on enterprise technology. You mentioned U unified threat management systems, one of the things WatchGuard does. Is there any other way technology might evolve in the next tw uh, two years to protect corporate from new security threats? Well, well. I'm starting to see out there is a, a lot of the hardware vendors that are involved with um, security products are looking more and more towards virtualized appliances, allowing people to uh, more easily scale for their yeah. needs. And it's converting a lot of these hardware companies into software companies, actually, because Absolutely. the real intellectual property for protection is in the software and how it's designed. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, there's a lot more research going into vulnerabilities, so that vulnerabilities are more quickly discovered, discovered. and yeah. passed uh, around so that people can do something about them. Cool. So let's end with one final question. I know this one is kind of hard. It's always hard to like pinpoint one big threat or one vulnerability. But in your opinion, what do you think is the, the biggest threat uh, to corporate security today? Oh, it's the blended threat. Okay. It's, it's the, the multi-pronged attack that uses very small small bits of information that 
can be reassembled either on the other side of the firewall or, or treated as a multi-pronged attack where different pieces of information can be gathered. Now, I can give you an example from um, back in my days when I worked for the gov government. Uh, it was explained to me the difference between how certain um, intelligence organizations would steal information. Let's say that the goal was to steal a bottle of sand off of a beach. Yeah. One particular uh, country would build a special submarine, train uh, people, uh, special soldiers and all that, and in the middle of the night, sneak up onto the beach and um, you know, steal the bottle, of yeah. fill the bottle up with sand and leave. And you would know that, that there's sand missing. You don't know who took it or anything. Yeah. Then there was uh, another um, uh, nation that did espionage in a different fashion. They would send over a million students to go to the schools <laughs> and have each one of them grab one grain of sand. And yeah. you'd never know that it happened <laughs> and they would uh, assemble all the sand back at yep. home. And without so, saying any nations, I can yes. definitely draw some parallels in yes. today's world. Cool. Well, great, great talking to you today, Frank. Yeah. And thank you so much for having, uh, for being on the show. Hopefully we can have you here again. Thank you very much. Well, that's it for this week's special episode. I hope you enjoyed the slightly different format. As always, be sure to check out the WatchGuard Security Center blog, especially this week, since I didn't get a chance to talk about all the details for the different security stories I'll post in the reference section. On top of that, you can always follow me at SecAdept, or you can follow my company WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.